Well, here we go. Prayer Secrets Part 4, as promised. There might even be a Part 5 coming up. We don't have our power outages this week like we did last week, So, but you might hear the wind. It's just blowing through the mountains, something fierce right now, but it's awesome. And listen, my friend Alex, he really likes the zingers that I do, you know, how not to pray. So I'll do a couple more, Alex, here in just a minute. But I want to do something that I don't generally do. This is April when we're uh, filming right now. And the ministry here has decided with my board of trustees just to receive, you know, do fundraisers in April and October. So it's not going all the time. So this is the month. And I'm going to put up for you we have had such great outreach they say the third year of any business starts to really take off so you see the chart here it's amazing and you know come back to me i read on facebook recently i'll put this up here in a minute too that they said well you know social media is not an effective way to spread the gospel <laughs> oh yeah Paul, some of his greatest ministry was done through letters. So this, what we're doing now are the modern day letters and spreading the word of God. And I'm asking to, you know, one time to help us in April, one time help us in October or join us monthly. That'd be awesome. Just go to our webpage and it shows you how to all the... So if you go to our webpage, I'll put it right down here. There's a donate button that shows all kinds of different ways to help. You know what? If you can't go out and preach the gospel yourself, send us who are doing it. We've had tremendous responses from all around the world. So help us keep going. Okay. So some zingers. Here we go. How not to pray. You know, one of the things that really, really bothers me at the end of most services that I go to, somebody's asked to you know, close in prayer or, you know, the pastor closes in prayer and they start to pray and they say, Lord, go with us as we go. Come on. Do we believe the Bible or do we not? Jesus said, behold, I am with you always even to the end of the world. So to pray, Lord, go with us is dumb. It just says we don't believe the Bible. The better way to pray, thank you, Lord, that you're with us as we go. Thank you, Lord, that you're leading us to go out and win souls. That's a much better way to pray, don't you think? All right. And here's another one. I've heard people, you know, before they they pack the car, get ready for vacation, everything's there. They start the car. They say, okay, let's pray. Lord, put four angels at the four corners of the car. Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> because it shows that you don't believe the scripture. I'll put it down here. It says the angel of the Lord is with those that fear him. They, they, they're round about. They're, they're taking care of you at all times. So you don't have to pray. Well, pastor, what do you do when you go on vacation? I'll tell you exactly what. I say, okay, we're ready to go. Thank you, Lord, that the angels of God are protecting us. Thank you that we'll get there and get back without incident. We declare in Jesus' name. Now, that's a lot better way to start is it not <laughs> so one more real quick one of my favorite pastors years ago <clears throat> he was at a meeting holding a meeting at another pastor's place and the, the host pastor said why don't we go and pray before the meeting starts great so they get together in a you know, room they begin to pray and the host pastor said lord move in our midst somehow some way Somehow, some way, somehow, some way, show me that in the Bible. And and, and the, the other brother who was testifying and telling about this, he said, suddenly the pastor, after, you know, like 20 minutes of somehow, some way, he suddenly blurted out, Lord, move by hook or by crook. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That is, oh, that's dumb. It's not in the Bible, and God's not going to move by hook or by crook. So there are ways to pray. 
And so many Christians are confused about how to pray. And I'm going to get into the rules of prayer in just a moment because, you know, you don't play basketball with football rules. Sports have different kinds. Well, you could. It would, you'd be confused and it would get messy. And that's the problem with most Christians. They get confused about how to pray. There are certain rules, certain ways to pray. I'm going to share them with you here in just a moment. And, you know, it makes a mess of your prayer life. You don't want that. You want to have results in prayer. And I'm here to tell you how to get it. So before we start into the different kinds of rules, I have uh, four things, four points about how to pray the prayer of faith. And I'll tell you what they are, then I'll tell you how to use them. Number one, decide what you want when you pray. Number two, find scriptures that definitely promise you those things. Number three, and this is important, don't pray until you've meditated upon those scriptures. And number four, then pray when you're full of faith, when you know that the answer will come. So the first part I said, decide what you want when you pray. One pastor was telling a story. He went up in front where people were praying at the end of a service and he tapped one guy on the shoulder. Uh, yeah. He says, what you praying about? Oh, nothing specific. He says, that's exactly what you're going to get. <laughs> nothing specific. We need to pray specific prayers. We need to, you know, like I said, well, I'll, go, I'll get to it. So number two, find scriptures that definitely promise you those things. It's so important. Uh, there was a man that, again, one of my favorite pastors told a story. He said, uh, brother pastor, I want to pray. Uh, you know, can I pray in the church all night? Sure. Okay. Part of Texas, it was getting cold. We lit the uh, furnace for him. And over in the parsonage, you could hear him getting loud once in a while through the night. And in the morning, he said, okay, well, did God answer your prayer? Yeah, he sure did. Well, can I ask you what you're praying about? And God is my witness. He said, well, I was asking God to let me divorce my wife and marry this other guy's wife. So they'd have to get divorced and so forth. Well, what did he say? He said, no. He said, I could have saved you a night's sleep because the Bible tells us about that, you know, about fidelity and marriage and one be before him. So it's really dangerous to pray prayers against the word of God. So no, step number two, praying the prayer of faith, you need to find scriptures that definitely promise those things. Step number three, don't pray. Don't pray until You've meditated upon those scriptures. You know, you, you speak them kind of over and over and just you know, let them sink down into your spirit, out your mouth, in your ear, into your spirit. And meditate upon those verses because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So get full of faith. Sometimes we pray too quick. Doesn't that sound funny in a prayer series? Yeah, sometimes we pray too quick. Get prepared. Prepare your heart. Fill your heart with the Word of God, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Mm -mm -mm. And step four, then pray when you're full of faith, when you know that the answer will come. Jesus said it in Mark eleven twenty four, In the New King James Version, he said, Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them that's so simple let me read it again jesus was talking about prayer and this is what he instructed he said therefore i say unto you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them simple and you will have them mm, man this is just powerful stuff and jesus knows how to pray amen all right, the next thing to learn about prayer, and this is why I think there'll be a prayer secret number five, because I, I, there's no way I'll get through them today, but I'm going to get started. Each kind of prayer has a different rule. Like I said, you can't play basketball with football rules. You have to play by the right rules. There are certain prayers that you put, if it be thy will, in it. But you don't use the if it be thy will in a prayer of faith because you find out what the Bible says about it and you know and you don't pray if you just say, I believe I receive it right now in Jesus name. So here we go. 
and I flip pages here. I'm on page 17 in these notes. It's amazing. So these are the kinds of prayers that I've learned. I'm a student of prayer, and I've been collecting nuggets about prayer for years. So let me read these next ones that I'm going to talk about the rules, and then I'll go back and explain them. All right. These are the kinds of prayer that I've learned about. Number one, intercessory prayer. Mm. Boy, is that powerful and necessary for this country. Number two, the simple prayer of faith, whose voice is hardly lifted above a whisper, and yet whose persistent faith shakes the very foundations of heaven. Number three, the prayers of consecration and dedication, not trying to change anything but me. And that's the kind of prayer you put the if. If you want me to do this, Lord, I'll do it. Just show me. Then number four, there's the prayer of agreement. Man, this is where the power is. It has an ironclad guarantee. Number five, battle prayer. I don't know a, load, a lot about it. I know Jesus was involved with it. Uh, I, I can think of a couple times in my life that I felt like I was really battling. And it comes with tears. And it comes with agony so we'll talk about that and then finally finally there's prevailing prayer that sometimes is called importunity which means you keep on and you keep on and you keep on and you're not deterred until you get the answer so prevailing prayer which overcomes every obstacle until it finally lands the answer in the harbor of peace isn't that beautiful all right let's start with intercessory prayer some of you people out there you are intercessors you do understand but intercessory prayer is when you're praying or standing in the place of someone else and asking like in their name you know as if you were them calling out and praying for changes now listen this is really important often christians and you may have experienced this often christians sense a feeling of depression which is not depression not at all but it's a prompting to inter intercede you begin to feel the pain or the depression of somebody else and you begin to pray in their stead and as you mature in the lord you'll begin to recognize that this is a call to pray for others not a time to be depressed let me give you a couple of wonderful scriptures amazing scriptures that i don't ever hear preached very much galatians 4 19 the king james he said my little children of whom i travail in birth again until christ be formed in you in other words the apostle paul had this kind of intercessory prayer feeling like he was lost and calling out as if he was the other person the, pe the people he was praying for in the in the country that he was at and he felt lost and he cried out asking god for salvation and just praying in in the place of another he travailed in birth you know, like when you're giving birth to a child, you, you women that have had children, you understand it's it's tough and, and it sometimes hurts. I've had it come upon me maybe 12 times in my life, and I've been doing this a long time. And I remember one time I was praying, and I just I knew I'd meet somebody at a place I was going that night that 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 needed salvation i began to cry out lord save me and i felt lost and i prayed until i felt victory and sure enough that night i got to witness to somebody and lead him to the lord intercession many times leads to new births and that's why we haven't had a lot of new births in some of the uh, churches that i know uh, because they don't have intercession they don't pray they don't stand up in the place of another here's another one well, let me read galatians 4 19 in another translation the niv it says my dear children for whom i am again in the pains of childbirth until christ is formed in you so he prayed uh, some of the uh, full gospel uh, churches say it's called praying through he felt the burden of you know not being saved and he prayed through until he felt the victory and the people you know received the lord it's like the path was cleared and now he's praying again in travail and like it says uh in the pains of childbirth until christ Christ is formed in them. That's wonderful. We talked about the Ephesians prayer. Give them the spirit of wisdom and a revelation. I prayed it for you the 
last time. That's what this is all about. So he interceded for them to get born again. Now he's interceding that Christ would be fully formed in them, that they're filled with the fullness of God. One of our uh, folks uh, texted me this week and said, man, the anointing was all over those prayers you prayed. So you might want to go back to Prayer Secrets Part 3, because I prayed those prayers, the prayers of the Bible, and I prayed them for you. And he said, there was such an anointing, he says, and I received. So praying prayers of the Bible is amazing, but that was last time. So one more great thing, great verse, Isaiah 66, 8, kind of refers to what Paul was talking about. It says, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Shall the nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So the answer is yes, a nation could be born in one time. You know, Jesus interceded for the world, and the nation, uh, his kingdom, came uh, was was brought forth by his intercession. And also, when Zion travails, she brings forth her children. An indication, the church. The modern day church of Jesus Christ is called Zion. It's in Hebrews. I'll, I'll put it right down here, the references. It's when it's Mount Zion. And when Zion travails, she brings forth her children. Mm -mm -mm. Listen, I'm going to jump right to the end and then come back next week because. I want, to, I want to talk to you about praying for someone's salvation. We'll pick up the prayer of faith next week. But praying for someone's salvation. Listen, when you pray for somebody to become born again or saved, don't pray, Lord, save them. Because he's not going to go back on the cross and sacrifice himself again. He's already done it. So there's two prayers that are much more effective when you're praying for your son, your daughter, your loved one, your person at work. Here's what you do. In 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4, I'll put it up. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Keep going. In whom the God of this world, that's Satan, has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And so I, I usually pray, uh, pray this for my older brother years ago. I break Satan's blinding power over him, and I release him to see the light of the gospel. Believers have authority using Jesus' name. And then the second prayer that I usually pray, I don't remember whether I prayed it for him because I was right there. In Luke 10, 3, therefore Jesus said unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. So pray, you're talking about instructions in prayer. Jesus said, pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. And so many times when I'm praying for somebody's salvation, I break the blinding power of Satan, releasing them to see to the light of the see the light of the gospel. And then I pray, Lord of the harvest, send laborers to that person to preach the gospel, to reap them from the kingdom. And if it's if you need me, hear I'm I send me otherwise send someone else it's up to you Lord of the harvest mm, I just love this stuff so I'm gonna pray right now because some of you that are watching probably haven't received Jesus yet so let's go ahead and pray I break the satanic power which is blinding your mind right now and I release you to hear the gospel and, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, the gospel is this, that Jesus, God sent Jesus into the world, and he went on the cross, and he died. He shed his blood to forgive you, and he was buried, he was raised from the dead so that you might be raised also one day. If you believe that, and you receive Jesus, I want you to pray a prayer something like this. Father God, come on, pray it. Father God, I know you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I receive Jesus. I receive the blood. I receive the forgiveness in Jesus' name. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer, write to me. I'd like to be in contact. I'm in contact with a lot of folks who've received Jesus, who are growing in the Lord. Uh, it, it's been wonderful fellowship, too. So write to me, and we'll, I'll write back, and it'll be amazing fellowship. I'd like to continue encouraging you in the Lord. 
So anyway, like I said in the beginning, here's our web page. You can go there to help propel this ministry. It's really going great guns. But let's get another booster going there. The Lord promised me that he would have people be an undercurrent, you know, lifting up the ministry so we can continue doing this full time. So anyway, God bless you. Come back next week and we'll do more of Prayer Secrets.